G'day and welcome to Emergency Medicine Topics in One Coffee. I'm Alan Giles, I'm an emergency physician, and today we're going to look at cerebral CTs and their appearance in trauma. Now previously we've looked, we sort of breezed through some of the basic anatomy you can see on cerebral CT, but now we're going to start looking at some of the pathology. Now there's one or two concepts that are worth just overviewing at the moment. The most important one is that um, if you've got acute blood, it appears white, it's hyperdense on your CT scan. So if, when we look at extradurals when they're acute, they will look white. As that uh, blood is broken down, it can appear isodense, and this can occur at about you know, sort of seven to 21 days. And then as the red blood cells have been completely broken down and it becomes more like plasma, it becomes dark. And these ones we can see in things like chronic subdurals. Another thing is what you need to look at is some of the compressive effects that occur from some of these space occupying subdurals and extradurals. Okay, so what should we look at? Well, we're gonna look at skull fractures, we'll go from the outside in. So we'll look at skull fractures, we'll look at extradural hematomas, we'll look at subdural hematomas, we'll look at traumatic subarachnoid hemorrhage, and we'll look at contusions. We might just have a look to see what air looks like. So looking at skull fractures, it's very important to know that sometimes skull fractures can be missed if you don't change the window to a bony window. As you can see from this appearance, it's a little bit subtle. Sometimes, like here, it's not subtle, uh, but it is easier to make sure that you look at it on a bony window. Now we're going to go to the very important extradural hematomas. So extradural hematomas occur in the extradural space. Now the extradural space is from the um, inner surface of the skull to the outer layer of the dura, so that's the extradural space. It's a potential space, but inside this space um, are the things like the middle meningeal artery, so it's got arteries in there. If you rip those arteries from injury, so you get smacked with a baseball bat, <coughs> then the, the artery will bleed and it will compress the surrounding brain. And because it compresses the brain and it's under pressure and it's limited by the cranial sutures, it tends to have that characteristic lens um, appearance, which we can see from some of these CTs here, that acute lens appearance. And it's compressing under high pressure the surrounding cerebral tissue. And that's the problem. And that's why it's such a neurosurgical emergency. Okay, that's the extradural hematomas. We're now gonna to go to the subdural space. So the subdural space, as you'd imagine, is from the inner layer or the meningeal layer of the dura to the arachnoid mater. This again is a potential space, but has bridging veins going through it. And these bridging veins can be injured by deceleration, by direct injury, and, and they'll bleed. But they're not limited by the cranial sutures, so they can be quite long, they can continue long. And you can see acutely here, here's some acute subdurals. They can be on one side, they can be on both sides. <clears throat> Sometimes what happens is that the patient might present a bit later with a, with a subdural. They might be on some anticoagulants and fall in a nursing home. And they may present a week or somewhat later than that with signs of decreased level of consciousness or weakness on one side. And the blood has started to break down and they had this isodense appearance. Sometimes this can be quite difficult to see, so you need to look for some of the effects of that isodense subdural against pushing against the surrounding cerebral tissue. If they present even later than that, they could have all that blood broken down and have the appearance of a chronic subdural, bilateral or unilateral. The last one which I look at is where you have chronic subdurals and then you bleed on top of that. So you have an acute bleed on top of a chronic subdural. Sometimes you get this quite unusual appearance where they've been lying on their back in the cerebral CT and the heavier new blood has layered out, such as here. Okay, so that's subdurals. Next, we should just think about traumatic subarachnoids. So like non-traumatic subarachnoids, the best place to see them is to look for the CSF um, cisterns, CSF-filled cisterns, and also the sylvian fissure. 
and in terms of the silver fish, you compare one side to the other side. So these CFCF spaces are usually black, but now with the acute blood, they'll become white, um, and therefore can be relatively easy to see, if you know what you're looking for. So what about contusions or bruising inside the cerebrum? Well, they could occur anywhere. They could occur from a direct strike, they could occur from a contra-coup injury, uh, they could occur from deceleration. And what you see are small white areas um, inside the cerebral tissue. Relatively easy to see. Finally, I'm just going to show you this unusual appearance, which was a patient who's got air in the subright node space. It's kind of funky, isn't it? Okay. Well, look, we've looked at skull fractures. We've looked at extradural hematomas. We've looked at subdural hematomas. We've looked at uh, traumatic subarachnoids. We've briefly discussed uh, contusions. And we've seen the funky air. I reckon that'll do for cerebral CTs and trauma in one coffee. I'll see you all later. Cheers.